I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making French onion soup. I remember French onion soup from my childhood. I'm a child of the 70s and 80s, and basically once a month my dad would make French onion soup. They were really into food. Um, they used to get Gourmet Magazine. I remember reading Gourmet Magazine as a kid. Um, so this was kind of popular in like food circles in the 70s and 80s. Uh, it's a soup that I love. Uh, and it's an incredibly like simple soup. There's not a lot of ingredients, but it is technique driven, right? It's all about the technique. So what we're gonna do today is get into the method of this, the technique of French onion soup, so you can make a beautiful soup with not a lot of ingredients, just a little bit of technique. For the most part with my French onion soup, I stay to classic, kind of the classic technique and the classic ingredients. I do have a few extras that I like to use just to kind of make it uh, just a little bit better in my opinion. So we're gonna start off with onions. The onions that I use are just plain yellow onions or white onions. I don't go for the sweet Vidalias or the Maui sweets. The onions have enough sugar in them already. We don't need to add more sugar. I find that when you use the sweet onions, it tends to be a little oversweet and I don't want that. Whole butter, I use whole butter unsalted. You can use clarified if you want, but I find whole butter is better because it has the milk solids in there and it starts to give us that like nice caramelized rich flavor uh, that you need with this soup. Um, the classic doesn't have thyme or bay leaf for the most part, but I like thyme and bay leaf. I like to use a little sherry as well. This is an amontillado or a medium dry sherry. Just to deglaze my pan, I think that this gives a little more of that umami flavor or that backbone to the soup. I have bread that I'm gonna toast and it's just a regular loaf of Italian bread. And then last but not least, the most important thing here is Gruyere cheese. You need to use real Gruyere. Gruyere cheese has a little bit of funk to it. It has this nice savoriness to it. You can use Swiss and I'm sure my parents used Swiss when I was a kid, but Gruyere has a little bit of like background flavor. It has this earthiness and nuttiness to it. Like I said, this is a technique. First part of this technique is the onions and how you cut them. I process my onions this way. I cut the top and the bottom off. This can go into stock, it can go into your compost bin, it doesn't matter. I take off the outer peel to make sure there's no dry onion on the inside. So you can get rid of this stuff. Right, so this is important, really important. For French onion soup, you want the onions to stay fairly whole. See, so I got a little dry spot there that I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna go down one more layer. Uh, you want this to stay whole. So if you cut across, you can see there's lines here on the onions. If you cut across those lines, that's called a slice. And if you slice your onions, they're gonna fall apart because we basically cut across all the fibers in the onions and they'll fall apart. And I don't want that for this soup. For the onion soup that we're making today, I want the onions to stay together no matter how long we cook them. So what I do is a julienne. I find those lines and I follow those lines. And this is gonna ensure that their onions stay together. So make sure that you julienne your onions, not slice them. Go along with the lines on the onion. My onions are sliced. I've gathered the rest of my ingredients. I have my butter, my sherry, I have salt, I have some pepper uh, and my herbs, and we're gonna get this going. This is the, the most important part of the technique. I'm gonna add my butter. And again, like I said, I'm using whole butter. I have about a quarter of a pound of whole butter. Uh, I'm gonna let this melt. I really don't want this to caramelize right now. I just really wanna melt it. If you get a little bit of caramelization or browning, that's okay. It looks like a lot of butter. Uh, we might take some of the fat off later, but for the most part, uh, it's not, it's uh, flavor, it's gonna be delicious. Okay, so I'm gonna break my butter up and melt it. Okay, once I get my butter in there, I'm gonna turn my heat up, turn it all the way up. Just get it melted all the way, and I'm gonna add all my onions. Some people will add garlic to this, but I'm sticking to the fairly traditional way of doing this. So all the onions go in, Okay, if you see any onions with blemishes on it, take it out. Uh, all my onions go in, my heat is all the way up. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of salt, a nice pinch of salt. And I'm gonna start to let this cook down and caramelize. Make sure it goes all over the place, get some on the floor. Okay, at this point you have to tend to this. You can't just walk away, you have to listen and watch. Um, and what I'm listening and watching for is that my onions 
are going to kind of start to shrink up. Uh, they don't get burnt in any places because sometimes in the center of the ring they tend to get burnt. I'm going to keep on moving them around and just watch that they're getting nice and caramelized. This takes time. This is the part of the technique that most people that make French onion soup don't have the patience for. So it's going to take some time. I'm going to hit it with a little black pepper now too. Always use fresh cracked black pepper. Okay? And now we wait and stir. The onions have been on for about five minutes. You can already see that they're starting to like shrink up and reduce. Uh, some liquids coming out of them. Uh, I'm just making sure that I stir and make sure that they're not getting too dark in one spot. Uh, but I want to make sure that I can actually hear a little bit of sizzling going on and I can still hear a little sizzling, which means that it's not just steaming, I'm getting a little color. When you hear sizzling and like crackle and popping, that's when you're still kind of sauteing or getting color. If all you hear is or hissing, that means all you're getting is steaming. So you want to make sure that at this point you're getting color, okay? If you're getting a lot of color, you have a gas burner, you're getting a lot of color at this point, you want to turn down your heat and just let it go a little slower. This burner isn't super powerful, so I'm not getting a lot of browning just yet, but once it starts to get brown, this is where you want to lower your heat. My heat's all the way up now. Once my ends start to reduce, they're probably going to start getting brown. Once some of the sugars start coming out, they're going to get brown, so I'll lower my heat in a few minutes. It's been about 15 minutes. We're still not getting super brown yet, but you can see my onions went from white to kind of a tan color. I'm going to keep moving them around. I'm not going to let them get too dark in one spot because burnt is not brown. We want it to be deep, deep golden brown, not burnt. Takes a little time. We're at about 15 minutes since we started. While the onions are caramelizing, I want to talk about the pot that I chose. I chose a pot that had kind of fairly high sides. It's, it's more of a stew pot than anything, um, but it has a ton of surface area. I don't want these onions in a stock pot where there's not a lot of surface area. I want them more in a pot like this that has a little bit of room to put the broth in, but it also has a lot of surface area so they brown nice and evenly. So try and find yourself a pot like this. This is a cast iron, but it's enameled on the inside, uh, so it doesn't like, give off any of that kind of iron flavor. But if you can find a pot with a heavy bottom that has a big amount of surface area on the bottom, that's what you want to do. The onions have been cooking for about 25 minutes and we're starting to get there, right? This is a critical moment. Um, you can see that the bottom is starting to caramelize even more. Uh, I haven't turned my heat down yet, but like I said before, if you have a hotter burner than me, you should have turned your heat down by now. Uh, and I'm really getting close. They smell really nice and sweet and caramelized. I'm going to still give it a few more minutes before we add the stock. It's been about 30 minutes and I think we're ready to go. My onions are nice and caramelized. I have a little bit of fond or some of the brown bits on the bottom of the pot. And I'm going to add my sherry now in deep glaze. I'm going to add my sherry. If you have a burner, you want to be careful that the flames don't lick up and uh, set this on fire. Uh, but you want to just put your sherry in and get all those good bits off of the bottom. Scrape the bottom of your pan. And basically all I'm going to do with this sherry is try and cook out the alcohol. You'll get a big whiff of alcohol to start. Now here's where the biggest misconception about French onion soup is. I have chicken stock. I'm using chicken stock. Uh, it's chicken stock that I made. Uh, I make a batch and freeze it. But beef stock is kind of a shortcut that a lot of people tend to use. The shortcut being that you don't caramelize the onions as much. Now it took almost a half hour for these onions to caramelize and get that nice roasty caramelized flavor. So that's where the key is, letting these onions caramelize really well. So I'm going to add my chicken stock. It's uh, warm. It's not hot, but it's warm. And I have about two quarts of chicken stock in there. At this point, I could add my thyme with that I tied up and my bay leaf. And I'm going to put this on the burner in the back and let it simmer for about a half hour. While the soup simmers, I got a couple things I had to prepare. Cheese. I want to grate the cheese. I got the Gruyere. You can get slices of this at your deli if, if that's great. That works too, but I'm going to grate it. So just take it out of the package. And I love Gruyere. Gruyere has kind of a nuttiness to it, a uh, little bit of like, I, for lack of a better term, funk. And I love it. Um, it's a little stronger than 
Swiss cheese. It has a little bit of a, a waxy crust that you can get rid of. That's just garbage. And I'm just gonna grate this on the large hole of my box grater. How about eight ounces here? Uh, I'm probably not gonna use it all on one bowl of soup, but I'm gonna grate it all anyway. Next thing I wanna do is make the croutons or the big croutons for the uh, soup. And all I do is I have a, a loaf of uh, semolina bread here. It could be pretty much whatever French bread you want. Um, and I don't go too thick. I'm going kind of, uh, what is that, about quarter to a half an inch. I don't want these to be really thick pieces of bread. Um, all I really want this to do is to go into my bowl and hold up the cheese so this cheese doesn't sink to the bottom. So I'm just gonna make maybe four or five slices. Put these onto my little tray. Hit them with just a little bit of vegetable oil so they get nice and crunchy. If you wanna use butter or you wanna use olive oil, go for it. And just a little bit of salt. I'm gonna put these in the oven until they're nice and golden brown. And I want it to be fairly firm so that they soak up some of that soup. Soup is simmered for about 25 minutes. Um, I'm gonna give it one final taste. I think it needs just a little more salt. I'm gonna put another pinch in there. And we're gonna assemble. Okay, I get everything I need by me. I have soup crocs. Now, this is actually a soup crock from my childhood. Uh, when my parents moved out of my childhood house, I took their uh, onion soup crocs. So I think they bought these at a path mark on Long Island. I don't really know, but I have these. I'm not gonna use this one, uh, but I do have this one. And I think I found this at a thrift store. Whenever I see onion soup crocs at a thrift store or a Goodwill, I usually buy them just because they're good to have around for like any number of things. And they usually like a buck. So buy soup crocs, right? Uh, I also have my soup croc on a tray. Cause what's gonna happen is when I put this into the broiler, some soup might spill. So you never wanna put this directly into the broiler like this. You wanna put it on a tray. Not only is it easy to get in and out on the tray, if it spills, it spills into the tray. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get my soup crock filled. Get plenty of onions in there. You wanna have a nice amount of onions. You can see that my onions did not fall apart. Let me move the soup over. And now we'll take our croute, put it on top. You see how it floats? That's key. You want it to float like that because this is gonna hold all of our cheese up, okay? Now classically, what I've been taught is you'll take your Gruyere and your cheese and put it on this and brown this and not brown the whole thing in the oven, but we're gonna put lots of cheese on it. So I take a lot of cheese, you know, I had eight ounces of cheese, so I'm putting about a quarter of it on here. I'm gonna go throw it in the broiler, and then we're gonna taste. Okay, it's out of the oven. I'm gonna put it onto a plate with a little napkin, nice and carefully, not to spill. Look at that, isn't she gorgeous? Let's give it a taste. Before we taste, I wanna look at it, right? Look at it, it's beautiful. It's got a nice cheesy crust on it. It's not burnt, but it does have some like caramelized stuff on the edge of the, uh, of the bowl. And this is how I like it, cheesy. You can smell the Gruyere. The Gruyere has a little bit of nuttiness to it and it's absolutely just like filled the house. I love it. So let's give it a taste. So we're gonna get in there and we get a little of that stringiness, which I like. If you don't like that much cheese, that's fine. Mm. Mm. The soup tasted good by itself, but that cheese just kind of brings out all that beautiful onion flavor. Mm. Nice. Um, delicious. It takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of technique. But in the end, it's absolutely amazing. You get a beautiful soup. Hope you liked this video. If you did, give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, hit the little bell to get notified when we have a new video out. Uh, we have merchandise. Check the link down below. Thank you, patrons, for supporting us on Patreon. We have a Patreon account. There's also a link down below. We also have an address if you want to contact us that way. Uh, and that's it, French onion soup. I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good one. <laughs>